I've used this slide before. I use it again without shame. It's about leadership. The person I'm talking about here is John Muir. For those of you who are not familiar with John Muir, he was a crusty old Scot that came across in 1860 to Wisconsin with his father and was a pioneer farmer. But more than that, he recognized so early on the importance of protecting the landscape, the parks, for America in the future. The concept at that time of what was happening in California, the land grab was on, the gold rush was on, there was no thought to the future. I'm purposefully doing this because I'm going to introduce it to Bowker because I think there are similar principles here. I like John Muir's quote, when we try to pick out anything by itself, we find it hitched to everything else in the universe. If that isn't a good definition of integrated watershed management, what is? It captures the essence of what we do here has an effect on what we do over there. So it's moving us to this holistic approach to watershed management. As I mentioned earlier, a top-down, a top-down, bottom-up strategy. The story here is that Terry, uh, Teddy Roosevelt had heard of John Muir, and Muir eventually got hold of him and took him up to the Yosemite National Park. Spent three days with him. At that time, convinced him of the need to get a parks strategy in for North America. Or for America. Roosevelt was impressed, went back to Congress, and the rest is history. So again, this is the case of the decision maker working with the visionary. And that brings me again into Bowker and the initiative here. The Bowker blueprint, at least in my opinion, is about reclaiming quote unquote lost territory. From damage caused as a result of our collective indifference, and you might say carelessness or indifference or greed or whatever, because we did not consider the values of, of, of urban streams important. When I was a young, I don't want to go that far back engineer in Scotland. None of this was talked about. Strong water was stuck in a big pipe and it was whiffed off to the nearest creek. No talk about the uh, low impact development or various areas. This has all come through but the passage of time. Now I want to sidebar a little bit just to mention a program I was involved with in the 1990s. You may remember it, some of you the Urban Salmon Habitat Program. And the good fortune to be manager of that program for its brief existence, and I say brief because it was unfortunate that politics takes over and the next generation comes and, and it died, I think, a, a rather early death. But um, <coughs> it, it, it passed on before it should have been, in other words. <coughs> but the point I want to make here is the principles in, in the Urban Salmon Habitat Program, again, are very germane to what's happening in Bangkok. Bowker in the 1920s as a prolific, at least had a good run of cocoa. Above Haltain Creek, Haltain Road, there was trout, etc. In other words, a healthy, healthy system. The sudden or increasing urbanization ended up with about 60% of the water of, of the system now enclosed in culvert or underground. About 50% of the land of the watershed is hardscape. Now, we didn't do this intentionally. We did it because we didn't understand what we were doing. And I feel that what we're talking about here, through CAVI and on the lower mainland, it's all about the sea. Trying to reverse that trend and bring us into the balance of ecology and development. I want to mention this in passing, and I know Calvin Sandbaum is here, that there's a, an initiative, Reinventing Rainwater Management, again, looking at the whole aspect of how we handle stormwater management. That, of course, is a major factor in the question of the damage to places like Barker Creek. <coughs> so what I like about the, the initiative here is the, the temerity, and I use that word, the audacity, if you wish, but the guts to propose a 100-year vision. And the reason we have to have a 100-year vision is simple, because Creep and, and urban development, it takes time to change things around. And if we don't implant that 100 year of long term vision, we'll end up with the usual death by a thousand cuts. 
The second thing, you are willing to act upon this vision, vision which has already been identified. And you've drawn three municipalities together to rehabilitate Banco Creek. To ask municipalities to step outside their jurisdiction, see themselves contained in the larger watershed, is a real step in the right direction. So Banco Creek is all about what I call a new form of governance. It's quiet, silent, but it's very effective. First vision comes, then the community involvement, then support from the municipal decision makers, and then finally apply design with nature as a consistent future approach to development. So it's turning the whole game plan around to another way of doing business. Now, let me link this into CAVI. For those of you who are not familiar with CAVI, the Convening for Action Vancouver Island was initiated at the Water and the City Conference in uh, 2006. However, it went, it started sometime before that, about 2003, 2003, we called it the Meeting of the Minds, gathering people together to start asking the big questions. What do we want Vancouver Island to look like in 50 years' time? And so from there, we had, um, we effectively, I think, somewhat, uh, worked with four, minute, four uh, regional districts, the CRD, Couch and Valley, the Nanaimo, and the Comox. Now they, as noted in that corner, represent about 90% of the population of Vancouver Island. We've also stretched sideways to revolve the uh, Greater Vancouver District, or called the Georgia Basin. I'm not going to go through this, but it gives you a sense since 2006 of the partnerships that have developed, developed and some of the deliverables that CAVI has achieved in that time. So this new business, as usual, is visualizing what we want Vancouver Island to look like in 50 years. And CAVI promotes water-centric planning and a design with nature way of thinking to create livable communities that balance with ecology. So what does this mean? Well, it's designing with nature and clearly with the climate change adaptation coming online, we have to start thinking in compact ways of how we do development. I think the last three bullets are particularly germane to about protect and restore urban green space, strive for a light and hydraulic footprint, achieve higher levels of stream wetland and marine protection. This kind of says it all. Tim Pringle from the Real Estate Foundation takes credit for this slide. But as you can see, the balance has been on the settlement side. We have not truly balanced ecology and development. And note, ecology can exist without human habitation. But human habitation certainly cannot exist without ecology. There's a book written by Alan Wiesman, A World Without Us, which is an interesting book for those of you who haven't read it. The planet will get on very well with us, thank you very much. And it's up to us to shape up and step up to the bar and do our bit. So what does that mean to Bowker? Well, with that vision of the balance of ecology and economy, communities will protect their collective well-being, choose to treat settlement change and ecology, resources with equal understanding, and they will find balance. I close with this comment. I give to my wife from this one who was a teacher in our days gone by. Because the two words here are, are really important. Vision and task. Vision means that you just exactly what Bowker's doing. You stretch to the future. You idealistic perhaps, but you, you set that goal. But you get your feet in the ground and you do the work. So it's not a sort of a touchy-feely thing at all. It, it's having a goal and having a plan to achieve that goal. A vision without a task is but a dream. A task without a vision is but drudgery. A vision without a task is the hope of the world. And captured apart in the church inscription in Sussex. You know. May I take poetic license and say, the last line that be a vision without a task is the recovery of the Bunker Creek watershed. And so in close, thank you, sir. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever